everybody, it's Tandy here with Living Acts 29 Ministries, and we are continuing our year in the Word today with reading Mark chapter 12, and I'll be reading out of the New Living Translation. Let's begin. And then Jesus, teaching them with stories, said this, A man planted a vineyard. He built a wall around it, dug a pit for pressing out the grape juice, and built a lookout tower. Then he leased the vineyard to, vineyard to tenant farmers and moved to another country. At the time of the great harvest, he sent one of his servants to collect his share of the crop. But the farmers grabbed the servant and beat him and sent him back empty-handed. The owner then sent another servant, but they insulted him and beat him over the head. The next servant he sent was killed. Others he sent were either beaten or killed, until there was only one left, his son, who, son whom he loved dearly. Then the owner finally sent, them, sent him, thinking, surely they will respect my son. But the tenant farmers said, to one another here comes the heir of the estate let's kill him and get the estate for ourselves so they grabbed him and murdered him and threw his body out of the vineyard what do you suppose the owner of the vineyard will do jesus asked i'll tell you he will come and kill the farmers and lease the vineyard to others didn't you ever read the scriptures the stone that the builders reject has now become the cornerstone this is the Lord's doing, and it is wonderful to see. The religious leaders wanted to arrest Jesus because they realized he was telling the story against them. They were the wicked farmers, but they were afraid of the crowd, so they left and went away. Later, the leaders sent some Pharisees and supporters of Herod to trap Jesus into something for which he could be arrested. Teacher, they said, we know how honest you are. You are impartial and don't play favorites. You teach the way of God truthfully. Now tell us. Is it right to pay taxes to Caesar or not? Should we pay them or shouldn't we? Jesus saw through their hypocrisy and said, Why are you trying to trap me? Show me a, Rome, a Roman coin, I tell you. Then they handed it to him. Whose picture and title is stamped on it? He said, Caesar's, they replied. Well then, Jesus said, Give to Caesar what is, belongs to Caesar, and give to God what belongs to God. And his reply amazed them all. Then Jesus was approached by some Sadducees, religious leaders who say there is no resurrection from the dead. They posed this question, Teacher, Moses gave us a law that if a man dies, leaving his wife without children, his brother should marry the widow and have a child who will carry on the brother's name. Well, suppose there were seven brothers. The oldest one married and then died without children. So the second one married the widow, but he also died without any children. Then the third brother married, and this continued with all seven of them. And still there were no children. Last of all, the woman also died. So tell us, Whose wife will she be in the resurrection? For all seven, seven were married to her. And Jesus replied, Your mistake is that you don't know the scriptures, and you don't know the power of God. For when the dead rise, they will neither marry nor be given in marriage. In this respect, they will be like the angels in heaven. But now, as to whether the dead will be raised, haven't you ever read this about the writings of Moses and the story of the burning bush? Long after Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob had died, God said to Moses, I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So, he is the God of the living, not the dead. You have made a serious error. One of the teachers of religious law was standing there and listening to the debate. He realized that Jesus had answered well. So he asked, of all the commandments, which is the most important? And Jesus replied, the most important commandment is this. Listen, O Israel, the Lord your God is the, only, is the one and only God. Then Jesus replied, the most important commandment is this, listen, O Israel, the Lord your God is the one and only Lord, and you must all love the Lord your God with your, all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and all of your strength. The second is equally important, love your neighbor as yourself. No other commandment is greater than these. And then the teacher of the religious law replied, well said, teacher, you have spoken the truth by saying that there is only one God and no other. And I know it is important to love him with all of my heart and all of my understanding and strength and to love thy neighbor as thyself. This is more important than to offer all of the burnt offerings and sacrifices required in the law. Realizing how much the man understood Jesus said to him, you are not far from the kingdom of God. And after that, no one dared to ask him any more questions. Later, as Jesus was teaching the people in the temple, he asked, why do the teachers of the religious law claim them the Messiah is the son of David? For David himself, speaking under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, said, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at the place of honor at my right hand until I humble your enemies beneath your feet. Since David himself called the Messiah my Lord, how can the Messiah be his son? 
the large crowd listened to him with great delight. Jesus also taught, Beware of these teachers of religious law, for they like to parade around in flowing robes and receive respectful greetings as they walk in the marketplaces, and how they love the seats of honor in the synagogues and the heads of table at banquets. Yet they shamelessly cheat widows out of their property and then pretend to be pious, making long prayers in public. Because of this, they will be more severely punished. Jesus sat down near the collection box in the temple and watched the crowds drop in their money. Many rich people put in large amounts, but a poor widow came and dropped two small coins. Jesus called his disciples to him and said, I tell you the truth, this poor widow it has given more than any other who made their contributions today. For they gave a tiny part of their surplus, but she, poor as she is, has given everything she had to live on. Thanks so much for reading with us this year in the New Testament. Come back on Monday and you can read Mark chapter 13.